welcome back to the Lorna Wisdom Schools podcast, the place where we connect with parents from around the globe to share our experiences on a variety of topics. We are a leading school and have been based in Singapore for over 40 years. We specialize in developing a lifelong love for learning and our focus is on working with our parents to develop their children's 21st century skills, transforming them into the talented, critical thinkers of tomorrow. I am your host, Renee Stone, head of Lorna Wiston Schools. And today I am delighted to be speaking with Dr. Jasmine Batch, a highly respected psychotherapist and behavioral specialist who runs Heart to Heart Psychotherapy here in Singapore. We will be talking about helping our children cope with change. Welcome, Dr. Jasmine. Hi, Renee. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. I know it's a very busy time for you, so we appreciate your availability to join us on this podcast. So we know that 2020, what a year, and 2021 has also started out to be an interesting year as well. So change is something that a lot of us have had to learn to deal with. So can you just share a little bit with us about why is change so challenging for people? I guess change is not challenging, but change to a lot of us is scary, mm. right? By mm. nature, we all want to be in control. Right. We want to know what's next. We want to know, tell me first. You know, we want to know that I need you to assure me I want to be sure. So change to us is uncertain, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Uncertainty is actually, we all know it's part of life. And yet with the nature of wanting to know the result, wanting to be in control, so we constantly fight with uncertainty. But this change, this, uh, you know, this pandemic change is right in our face that we can't run. Right. You know, like no one can say that I try to use my word to numb myself. I try to not think about it. No, because they come right on your face. They say change. Right. They come right on your face. Say that you can't fly. They say you have to look at the camera and talk to yourself like you teach where nobody, you know, everybody right. was like, no one can say that um, like we have nowhere to run. So that is, I think it is more of the fear than the, the we see as difficulty because we are first also very adaptable. Mm, right. But Absolutely. we don't like it. We don't like it, you know, we can, but if I have a choice, Please do not change, right? <laughs> but but we are adaptable. We don't, we don't, we, are, we actually don't think it's actually difficult. You look at every one of us, we are mm, there. Absolutely. Right? Like, you say that I still go to school by myself, even though the teacher is not there. No, right? You still have to turn on your monitor and then look at your teacher, ask you to do exercise and then just do it, right? <laughs> absolutely, right? absolutely. So we, we just, we are all there. We are actually not actually thinking as a, no one thing is like oh it's so challenging no i think it's so fearful because we actually like cannot run we can't run mm -hmm. so this is where you can see that people around us they are they're more agitated mm -hmm. they're anxious mm -hmm. right we, we get yes. angry so easily because we are literally like being put in the spot that i don't want it right yeah it's so out of our comfort say, zone say, yeah i would say that look at that I think it's just like, first, be glad that we are so adaptable. Mm, right. We're already there. Right. Right. So it's not anything about challenge because it's nothing to fight because there's nothing to fight. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no, it's nothing to overcome. You just have to go through it. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a fear of like, would that be long? You know, right. would it get worse? You know? How far can I go? You know, it's the questions that we ask ourselves that make us very anxious. Right, yeah. right. If you look back, right, for the past one and a half two years, right, did you actually, like, you know, think, oh, so difficult to change? No, you just change. You don't even know you change. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You adapt <laughs> to your environment. That's a really good point. The comfort right. zone, you made such a great point. It's something that's not mm -hmm. in our comfort zone. So, therefore, it does lead to the anxiety. So yeah, I think you framed that beautifully for us. Yeah, thank you. So when it comes to then parents, so how can parents create an environment 
that embraces change for their children. Uh, when I talk about parenting, parents always think that I cite the children, but it's true. I will never cite the parents. Okay? okay. So when you want me to fix your child, I always fix the parents. Right. So it is, it is about, I think children right now need a lot of understanding. Mm-hmm. Right? So just give you an example that what I personally has been, which is like, uh, uh, just uh, a week ago. So I always, always wonder, like, I have four kids myself, right? Right. So I have from 26 to uh, 14 years old. Amazing. Amazing, right? All chapter you ask me, I say, if you say, who is qualified to talk about this? I am. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I read 1,000 books and I raised kids for 26 years and I'm still raising four, okay? <laughs> so I always wonder why these kids want to go McDonald's and study. You know, I, you know, in, in my era, right, I, you are much younger, okay, not you, but my era, seriously, you, you have to go library, choir, and then you study, you focus, and all these kids go Starbucks, McDonald's, you know, in the shopping mall. I always ask my kids, are you sure you guys studying? I can never understand that. Right. So two weeks ago, like, I just enrolled myself into another, uh, another master's degree. So I pick up a book, I try to read at home, you know, my conducive environment where I told it conducive. Right. But then I realized I can't even study because I will pour a glass of wine, I turn on a Netflix, I play a Sudoku. I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So then I was thinking, I was like, right, I need to get myself out of this environment. So I actually, first time on my life, I'm 50 this year, 50 years old, I, I bring my book. I went to Starbucks and Great World City. Wow. <laughs> After my throw, my younger son, I just, I actually have my own dreams, but I want to play cheap. I just buy one bottle of water and then get the cheaper snacks from there. I'm so scared. They were chasing up. I am inexperienced in studying in Starbucks. So I love I, your honesty. <laughs> yeah. I literally just, just find the, the corner so that the waiter won't chase me out. But it was very early, so there's no not many people around. So I found a corner and then I opened my books you know and then I start to pretend I'm reading then I realized that as you fake it right you actually make it so that first saying all, is true first of all you can't just start out like studying and then you play sudoku because people watching right you know? absolutely yeah so so then you actually very productive I actually spent two hours there I actually spent two hours reading because I am so worried that people watch me read. I better read, you know. I just read it. Yeah. Then I understand that. I understand that why the kids are right, actually doing that. Because in our time, distractions is not in your palm. Right. Absolutely. Right. Mm. Right. Because in our time, TV is in the living room. TV is TV. Right. right. There's Absolutely. no such thing as Wi-Fi. You want to turn on the radio and, you know, you have to go near the radio because there's no speakers around sound, right? Yes, yes. Right? Indeed. And there's no no WhatsApp constantly ping you, you know, your friend has to call you, your mother has to scold you, you know, like, like, like you, you can get focused a lot easy because right. you do not have so much temptation that looks like 7-Eleven everywhere. <laughs> Right? I love that analogy. Yes, you are right. Absolutely. So now the kids are actually, if parents say, you know, our time, I say, no, your time is already gone. Right. Now you have to learn their time because in their time, they are actually so much better, stronger, resilient than us because aside all these distractions within their, you know, their reach, they're still doing their job. Mm. Right, but we think they are not enough. Right, we, we we have not actually come to their level to actually look at what this young generations actually are are facing, dealing right and fighting. Like I always say, you know, when you when you look at your child, right, they go going online study. Have you ever done that six subject one at a time? you know and then look stupid in front of the teacher do your PE lesson and then you have to stay focused while your phone is on the text next to the textbook 
and you literally had to pretend that you listen and then you cross by cross. All the things you think is easy. No, the mental drain is so tired. And then whereby you send your kids to school, you look at all the little kids, right? Like four, five years old, you see what the parents say to their other like, seriously, you literally say that they say, okay, be nice, be good, share your crayon, listen to teacher, pay attention and play safe and eat well and wash your hands. You know, a thousand instructions, they need to go and go to school. And, and it was just like, really? Really? You Instructional know? book of what to do for yeah, the day. Yeah. Seriously, they, their life is actually so much difficult than ours. We always mm. say that, no, we're going to work, we pay bill, we only work and pay bill. That's all, you know, you don't need to straight share your crayon. You don't need to be nice. You don't need to wash your hands when, you know, you, you don't need to do all the things, but your little kids have to do all the things, mm. right? And come home, you never give her a pet say, well done. You say, do you have homework? <laughs> Yeah, do you know what? That is such a great point. I love that you raised about they are so resilient and it's how we talk to them and communicate with them to acknowledge all of the mm. things that they do in one day. Yeah, because you see parents, parents are the, the, the robber. They rob away the confidence. They rob their resilience. They rob their, their, their spirit in fighting, right? So there's one mother, she came to me and she said, you know, my son, you know, he's so into playing this, you know, like they play online game. Right. He's so into playing this online game. And then I don't like about him is when he played, when he lost the game, he got so very upset. I say, isn't that normal? Right. <laughs> Do you want to see your son one day? He lost in game. He lost in his sport. You say, Yay, mom, let's celebrate. I lost. You know? <laughs> this is like, I say, what's wrong with that? It was like, you don't like him. So what would you like him to be? When he lost a game, he said, come on, a game is just a game. Competition is just a competition. Study is just a study. When I fail, I just fail. Right? But mm. if I see my son having that, that character strength, mm. I would want to tell him that you do have it. You can mm. actually expand it. Not just using in game, using in study, using in whatever you try. When you didn't make it, you don't like it. Mm, right, 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 and it's right, and how to cope with that, right? Right, correct. We have to expand what they have instead of string or take away or kill what they got. Mm. But a lot of parents, I don't know. Maybe all the parents need to change the way this the eyeball, but. So many, right? You look at all these kids, right? Uh, and again, I say, we all born with self learned capability. Mm -hmm. We born with confidence. We born with high self-esteem. We mm. born with amazing self-worth. Mm. How do you know that? Look at all the young kids, right? If you dress a boy in a dress, ask him to dance on the table, he dance. Mm. Right? And you see they keep trying until they walk, mm -hmm. right? No fear, no fear. Pick him up, you know, until one day we say, are you sure you can do it? Mm -hmm. What if you fail? We instill negativity. Yeah. We instill fear. We teach them about doubts. Mm -hmm. Then we say, why are you so weak? Mm, yeah oh that just makes bring tears to my eyes because it is so true it's the fear of failure that we input on the children yes and all the fear and doubt is ours mm, mm -hmm. you know so parents will say that i let him know first so that he they said no because his journey he need to go through it because he need to learn to fall to stand up right yeah, absolutely he needs to break to know that how to rebuild, mm -hmm. right? He need to he need to fail to learn how to restart. Mm. But lots of kids don't even dare to fail because no one allowed them or teach them or show them how to restart. Failing is not scary. It's no. failing and from then on, he said, I no longer want to make mistakes. That is very scary. Yes, yes. I mean, I will never try again. Yeah, right. Yeah. You see? So parents try their very best, put in whatever they can to prevent feeling. I say that is the best lesson. Yes, indeed. Right? 
Yes. If you don't want him to fail at 14, you want him to fail at 40 and hang himself. Yeah, right. Consequences. Yes. Yeah, if we don't treat them that it is okay, disappointment is okay, we honor that. Right, because at least right now he fell under your care with Mm -hmm. your cushion, Mm -hmm. you know. So that this is the best training ground with the two training master that he got and he trusts. But if this two training masters say that no way, we're not going to do this because we don't want you to ever do this. So that a lot is the parent's pride, right? right? The child failure yeah. is like, because a lot of time when the child fail, it's just like, people will say that, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You know, people will reflect to parents. So that is where I can understand that parents do carry this baggage on them, right? right? Then it goes to mental health, right? If my son is, is suffer from depression, people will ask, what's wrong with the parent? Mm. So it's very hard to deal with that questions as a parent. So we sometimes have to sacrifice our child to keep our pride intact, you see? So all this thing is all come like a cycle, right? There is no, I don't, I, I no longer believe that we are not aware of mental health is important. It's just that we are, we are being judged, being pressured by the society and right. we no one actually teach us how to how to face it how to deal with it because judging is everywhere but because we do yes. not want to be judged you can see people hide this only right. thing out of the and we let we all know right right yeah. absolutely absolutely you are right it's the the pride the the loss of face that is yeah a big hindrance for that Wow. So in children, the desire for validation is very real. So what advice? Even even in adults. Yeah, right. (laughs) Absolutely. Any human, okay, not just children. Absolutely. So what advice can you give for people who really desire the validation from others? So a lot of parents say that I am very encouraging, you know, I always say something nice. And then the, when she did a good job, I said, oh, I'm so proud of you. Um, I said, that is actually a very wrong line to say to your child, I am so proud of you. Because in the end, we learned that we have to do something to make someone proud. Mm. Okay. I will always ask my kids, are you proud of yourself? Right. Right. You see, so I want my children to know that I'm doing it first. I have to make myself proud. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's First thing, I'm not here to make anyone proud. And when my mom see I am making myself proud, I believe she is happy. The power of words. Yes, the power of words. You know, it was just like, I'm so proud of you. Well done. Really? No. Right. So that, you know, I will always say that I am so glad that you chose this. I'm happy with the decision that you make. I can see your progress. Aren't you proud of yourself? Yeah, reframing it. I love that. Putting it back onto the child. And and if you notice, right, the the generation where we don't raise them that way, you hardly hear people say, I'm so proud of myself. Because to us, it sounds like like you are fishing for a compliment or you are too uh, 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 proud of yourself. It's like you feel so scared to like, like proud of yourself like if you're not proud of yourself who else will proud of you right right, right. absolutely right. So we, we, we don't say that you know like wow I'm so impressed with myself that I can do this you hear anyone say that no I say that myself all the time <laughs> excellent <laughs> my, children, my children so used to this is them yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, oh my God, wow, I impressed myself with this, this dish that I just cooked, you know. I was like, I'm so proud of myself today. I always say that because right. that is where when you use your voice and you're able to use your voice, that mm-hmm. is where you build your self-esteem. Right, right. You, know? you can see that people around us, not just children, when they have lower or they have low self-esteem or they have no self-esteem, you don't hear their voice. It's so true. It is so true. So I would never ask anyone, go and find your voice. No, we all have voice. I say, use your voice. Yes. Use your voice. Use a lot of like, I I am very happy with myself. Mm. I like what I choose. You know, Mm -hmm. I look so good today. You you see? I 
I always tell people, I say, if someone say, hey, you look good today. I say, I know. And people say, why are you so rude? You should say, thank you. I say, I'm no, 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 honest. I hope she is honest. <laughs> <laughs> Right, absolutely. And as you say, with self-esteem, hmm. s- comes so many positive changes to life. Correct. It's all little, little, little things that mm-hmm. you do, right? They build your core. Right. You see, if you can't even take compliment, where do you put them? Where is your core? Mm-hmm. Right? If you cannot even see yourself in some way, like you know that we're imperfect, correct? But then if you don't actually see that you have some good thing in there, how do you give yourself self-care? Because you don't care something you don't really care or matter because it's not important. So small, tiny. Mm, mm. Right? So then this little one will always want to seek validation by doing something. So you can hear the kids say, I try to be a good child. For yeah. who? For who? Not for me. Right. For, for my parents. Why do you need to be a good child for your parents? so that they will love me. So how sad that love has to earn as a child. Mm. No children need to have this thought, in my opinion. I hate it. You know, Mm. no child, right? Like I say, children come to your work or our work, this is not their choice. Right. It's not their choice. So you cannot say that, you know, I work so hard for you. Sorry, you don't, you have to. (laughs) It's <laughs> a job, right, you know? right? Yeah, I sacrifice so much for you. Sorry, no, that is not sacrifice because that is your duty. Yes, it's your duty. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that is even something that sometimes is heard by students. Like, oh, I want to get good results. Why do you want to do that for mum and dad? Yes. And then it's trying to reframe that, as you say, so that it is for them first and foremost. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I have a child. She. She is nine years old. You say, I, I try to be a good girl. You know, I try to uh, uh, score A for all my subjects. I say, oh, you say, so that my mom and dad will be very happy. I say, so do you believe that one day if you have all the, like every every subject you, you score very lousy, right? I'm not saying you feel like you don't like it. Do you think they will stop loving you? She cries. She said, I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, how sad is that you have, like, the only thing that you can, if you want to raise a confident, motivated child, mm. first thing is safety. Yes. I feel sure. If I had to guess, do you love me today? Mm-hmm. Your child is constantly standing on the earthquake ground mm. that please then do not raise your expectations so high of someone who living in like Japan earthquake on you know, the land, right. they never stop, that they will do well, they will focus, they will, they will look at themselves, they don't because they're constantly anxious. First thing that you go to, you come home, you guess whether your mom is happy with you, will your dad love you today? Then you go to school, you also constantly like were the teacher like you, with your friend like you. Imagine your young child have to go through it every day. Yeah. Every day. And on top of that, she still had to pretend to be good, nice, you know, easy, friendly, loving, kind, mm-hmm. obedient. Yeah. It was like in, if, if you ask all the parents, they're gonna write down the duty as a child and the write down the duty as a mom and as a dad, you put them in shame. Mm, yeah unconditional love yeah you're right the sense of belonging yeah give them safety first any relationship right any relationship if someone may feel unsafe would you want to stay right right you every day have to ask do you love me do you do you still love me do you will you love me long you know like like we we are adults, we've gone through, we are in a relationship, we know that, right? It's not an easy feeling. You can't focus, right? You make your day lousy. Mm. And then you want a child to actually handle all this, which is uh, I think we are actually not living in the reality. Yeah. Right. Mm. So if you want your child to actually do their job, you make sure they are safe. You make sure they feel secure with you. 
mm-hmm. you know? So when they're secure with you, when you send them out to the world, they know they can run back home with two safe people in the house. Yeah, yeah. So then they, they will have the courage to try and keep on trying and to excel and to do what they want and do the best they can. And they are not afraid of failure. They're not afraid of, you know, setback because they know that they are safe. Yes, well said. Absolutely. Safety, so important, so important. Now, moving on to, you are an expert in the field of relationship issues and mental health. So can you share with us why is connection so very important for our mental health, Dr. Jasmine? Because connection is how we were wired, right? We are never built to or like meant to be alone. You see, this is where we, no one tell you you have to find your partner. Right. When you go to a new place, you want to know any familiar faces, right? Sure. So that connection makes us feel grounded, mm-hmm. right? So when you feel grounded and you know you are not alone, this is where you actually have support, mm-hmm. right? So connection is about the sense of being supported. Right. You see? So when you see people who actually suffer from depressions, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. they actually very alone they're not lonely they're very alone alone in a way that they don't believe they support right they also don't believe that people can support them or will support them so you see when people fall into this uh, uh, category right they usually have this very very uh, uh, um, a clear trait of them is like they always do things alone like, right I, I make it i can do it by myself mm-hmm. you know I don't need help or they say, I don't want people to worry about me. Right. And we do hear that a lot, right? Yeah. So that is mm-hmm. when, when you are disconnected, mm-hmm. when you go, you live in the very dark cold tunnel. Right. Eventually you have to believe that there's a word, there's what we put, what I visualize it as depression. Right. Because you were, first of all, you disconnected because mm-hmm. you actually make the belief that no one can help you. Mm. No one will help you and you should do it all by yourself Mm -hmm. and you don't want to be anyone else but then you see you just cut off everybody right right but then you walk straight to the tunnel and say that let me figure it out myself so you try everyone who suffer from any mental disorder or illness right they are not just today they sleep tomorrow they're sick no they're right. all fighter. They all was once a great fighter. They fight alone. Uh, okay. They fight alone. They fight really hard. They wonder. They're injured. They fight. They stand up. They do it again until, until they, like you, you fight till you don't know what else you can do. You will feel first thing you feel stuck. Right. Right. So the first sign is stuckness. You feel stagnant. You feel stuckness. Okay. So when the stuckness come, the next best friend come is called helplessness right so helplessness will come and sit next to you then the last one will come is called hopelessness so depression if you look into their story you will see chapter one stuckness chapter two helplessness chapter three hopelessness so this is not depression that you really want to end your life it's hopelessness because mm. you have it's like imagine that you have nothing to look forward to Right, you right. have no longer have even the slightest hope that I hope I can see sunrise tomorrow. No, you say, what is the point of waking up? What is the point of the next moment? All those is you see hopelessness in your face. It's very, very sad. Mm-hmm. Very sad. You know, every time when I speak to all these people, right? Literally, like hopelessness is where already tried. You know, you don't say that. Oh, why is why is so weak? You know, it's just a bit, you know, a bit down and then they want to kill themselves. No, those who are there, they mm-hmm. are great fighters. Right. They are great fighters. You see, they have fought and fought and fought and fought until they can't. The same, we all do, right? We we breathe and breathe and breathe until we stop. Right, right. Right? So this is where connection is so important. First of all, do not overestimate yourself and do not ask, underestimate people who care about you. 
Amazing, amazing words. I just want to pause for a minute to reflect on that because that is such a great quote, such a powerful quote. Thank you so much. That leads us into stress. So <laughs> stress. Now, what are the signs that we can look out for in children? Signs of stress. First of all, we, uh, you know, I always hear people say, I need to manage stress. I need to deal with my stress. I always ask, you want to manage something, right? You want to fix something, you must know. Like, I say, fix my TV. You must know what, how TV works, right. isn't it? Absolutely. Right? I say, change, change my car or like, I don't even know how to open the, the front, what is they call it? The bonnet? Yeah, the bonnet. <laughs> right. like, I don't even need it. I was like, how are you going to fix it? How are you going to manage it? You can't. Yeah, so right. all, we need to make people understand that what is stress. It sounds scary, but stress actually is a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. So it's the stress that keep us, stress is the one who keeps us motivated. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. it, imagine when he have no stress, right? A lot of people who are who are in depression, they literally no stress. That's why they don't shower, they don't change their clothes, they smell because I'm not stressed about whether how people see me or smell me, right? Because sure. I am stressed, I make sure I change a nice shirt to see you because I stress, I don't want you to judge me. I, I wash my face, I comb my hair. All this is because of stress. Right. Okay. Right. Mm. Right. But then when you overdo it where we Thing we do not want to have stress, this is where it become a wave, right? Mm -hmm. First, you need to understand that no one actually teaches about stress. Exactly. Not even today's world. Right. Right. Where do I learn about stress? Where do you learn about stress? When you were young, you know, you, you do your homework, you tears, then your mother said, oh, she just a bit stressed, right? Then you in your teenage, your boyfriend dumb you, then your mother said, oh, she just a bit stressed. Then you go to uni, you, you figure out how to what kind of course you want to do. Then your mother say, oh, she's just a little stressed. And then you got a job, then your mother say, oh, the boss is just push her too hard. She's just a little stressed. What is that? What is that? Is that? Right. So, no one actually exactly, right? No one, no one, no one. So we pick up stress. It's like, so it is it's a little bit difficult, a mm. bit overwhelmed. I don't mm. like it. Stress. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. It was just like, like it's a whole big llama cow carry as long as anything, right? 24 hours, like my work is stressed, my friends stress me, my spouse stress me, my children stress me, my cooking stress me, my mate stress me, the traffic stress me. Literally, sometimes they are not stressed. Right. Not stressed. Right. It's just used yeah. so loosely, the term. Correct. The term you so loosely. So when you use so loosely and then you... You actually, when you see people who are trying to manage their stress, right? To me, it's just like they're trying to manage their invisible friend. <laughs> right. You know, I was like, what, what are you managing? Like what? How? You know, I, I need to, I need to, I need to be less stressed. Uh, so who is she? Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> who is she? And where she come from? Uh, what is her hair color? You know, what is her character? Mm. How she actually, you know, what she did that make you want to like, uh, you make her less and you if you ask all these questions you look at your stress what is that yeah. what is that I just don't like it right first right. of all this is like when I am doing something I don't like mm -hmm. right so if my child is not very good in in Chinese so when I make her do Chinese she definitely will have like resistance sure. isn't it Absolutely. she will definitely try to uh, push high and lie and headache, drink water, go toilet, you know? Because all this, because it's, we know that, like our mind know that, ooh, this is not fun, right? Right. So this is where we will procrastinate. Because when you have to deal with something that is not fun, you actually drain mental strength. So when we turn on Netflix, we charge, right? Yes. But sometimes Netflix, the movie too long, you forgot about it. You overcharge, you overcharge, so then you didn't do your homework. So this is why we say, I am so stressed. <laughs> because actually, the mind actually tells you that, yes, it's overwhelming. Yes, it's unpleasant. 
take your mind off for a while, go to Disneyland, play for two hours. Then we say, oh, fun. So we go to Disneyland, we play two hours, then we say, oh, they're half day pass promotion. So we buy the half day pass. And then we play, 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 play. We say, hey, one day is cheaper than half day. We play one day pass. And then we continue to play. They say, you know, there's a monthly pass free or charge. Oh, we get it. And then we, we, we play until we become a yearly VIP member in Disneyland. And then we say, why not I build my own Disneyland? This is where addiction come in. Right, absolutely. Right? Addiction come in, it mm. is all start from, we feel a little stress, mm. and then we procrastinate a little bit. Yes. And then we internally become VIP of the Disneyland. <laughs> and then we, we, we are doing so well in Disneyland that we start to build our own castle. Right, sure. Then we review, if you are in your own castle, and you play and play and play, tell me, no one will want to go back to reality because it's fun in here. Yes. Just look at gambling, drugs, mm. even smoking, right? Drinking, even workaholic. Mm. This is all a Disneyland that we built. If you have this part of you, look back. What is it that's so unpleasant in your reality that you do not like it? Mm, right. You see? You see, so no one, no one will procrastinate something that they love. Like if I want to go shopping and buy a Chanel bag, I won't want to procrastinate. I was like, go now, you know. Totally now. agree. I would say, let me procrastinate. It's so stressful to think about the Chanel bag. I will do it tomorrow and so no, because you love it, you know. Right. You so anticipate into it, right? So understand sure. your child. When someone, someone mm. is not into it, first, it must be something that I don't know well. Mm-hmm. Right. And I haven't like if you don't know, you cannot like it. Yes, yes. Right? That's a very good point. I don't know, I don't like it. I you cannot, no matter how you motivate me, it's not going to work. Right. Right. And I also tell parents, motivation is important, but motivation is like vitamin C. Why? Because you pee it out every day. Right. This is why you take vitamin C every day, you know. So you can say. Daughter, good job, well done, come back there. Okay, tomorrow I say again, you know, because everything, because later on, she pee it, gone, gone. So if you want to motivate your kid, you make sure you are so motivating that you do it constantly four times a day, every six hours, mm. right? Mm. Otherwise, the next thing is you inspire. Right. Inspire is your child look at you, they watch you how to be human mm-hmm. they watch you how to fail and you try again they watch you when you break and you beat yourself up again they watch you try again they watch you gossip they watch you judge they watch you and then they inspire by you and then you say why are you just like your father no they are not just like your father they learn from them okay um, yeah. all these are learned behavior mm-hmm. learn behavior if you can let your child learn it's like self pick up learn they will pick it and own it for life. Motivation is you try to force feet mm-hmm. and they either throw up, their stomach ache, they pee out, they poop out. You have to do it every day and they, they hate you, you hate them. Yeah. Oh, role model, learnt behaviour. Absolutely. So important. There is so much involved in being a parent. Yeah. You cannot tell your child, Come on, relax. Don't be so stressed. And every day she see, she hear, oh my God, my work is so stressed. I cannot take it. I'm so stressed. I feel like killing myself. I want to die. I want to. It's like, like where you think that child done? Yeah. This is like, like you, you have to walk your talk. Yeah. Right? If you want your child to be patient, like be patient when you try it, okay? Take it slow. And then, come on, guy, come on, guy, mommy, in the hurry, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Right. you know show your child what is called patient the same thing is like a lot of parents say my kids don't respect me because respect can't be taught yes yes right? absolutely have you and... showed them have you showed them what is respect you know my son is so ungrateful have you showed them what is called gratitude yes right like, I want my kids to love me then show them how to love right you know I want my kids to know how to deal with disappointment and show them how you deal with disappointment. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Right. So meanwhile, when we want to save all these little ones out of the disappointment that are created by the world, 
I say that we, we have no, no time to actually, you know, raise them, right? So we cannot wait because you can see all these kids start to hurt themselves. Every single day I see children, like I say, my youngest, my youngest patient who actually attempted suicide, she's seven. Oh, that's heartbreaking. You know, I was at seven, where were I? I was still like digging the the the, 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 the mud and not doing Yeah, it. climbing <laughs> trees, you know? absolutely. Yeah, I was just like, what is homework? Seven years old, right? Yeah. Seriously, what is what is that, you know? And and you hear what they talk about, they are what, I mean, I, when I talk to all these young clients, I have a book called uh, Young People Jargon. I don't know what they say. They use the word, <laughs> you know, uh, they First, the uh, one thing I say, say, you know that I'm so angry. My friend blue ticked me. Uh, I said, "What's that?" Uh, <laughs> That's the WhatsApp. Is that right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I was like, I right. said, what so I, I have a, I have a book called a dictionary of the young people, and then okay. they talk about the school, their work, they, all the work. I was like, "What is that?" You know, I, yeah. I, you see, so their work is very different from our work. So when we come back to disappointment, I will be lying if I say that. We shouldn't have expectation or we don't have expectation on our children. Right. right? We all have expectation on people. Yes. It's yes. On true. ourselves, on situation, on things that we we are about to participate, right? Because expectation is it keep us in the, the in the in the in the measurement that we want to be good. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, but because expectations, if you're not actually look deep and clear enough right because they always come with disappointment yes right yes. and when children cannot deal with children cannot deal with disappointment because to them they believe that disappointment means i am hurting my parents mm. you know imagine that uh, hurt someone that you love then they become very helpless why they become depressed they feel helpless mm. right so when they feel helpless and then they keep trying. They try to not disappoint you. And they try and try until they're hopeless. Right. And when they're hopeless, they make believe that I can never be good enough for you. I am the one who made you so sad. And I cannot make the family proud. I so hopeless, you see. So you don't want your child to own this theory, right? Yeah. So be honest with your child. Mm -hmm. that you have expectation first thing mm -hmm. okay but the expectations got to be relevant like you know it's a close to reality and i think expectation if you explain it nicely actually is a good thing i would love people to have expectation on me because mm -hmm. you would know you would not expect the auntie who clean the toilet in the paragon toilet uh, uh, ground floor you would expect her to actually uh, participate in going for president of Singapore. Right, right. Right? It's it because I see the potential. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is why I set the expectation on you. Mm, sure. You know? Sure. But a lot of children don't understand it and parents don't understand it. So if you want to set expectation on your child, you make sure you see something that mm -hmm. I call potential Right. So if I see that, wow, my this child is late so long and he loves to run, I actually have expectation that he will win this year running whatever thing. Right. right? Because yes. I see. So when my child know that, this is what my dad see in me. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, if I I take his expectation and put mine, actually, it's actually very similar level. Right. You see? So when I am, when I fail, I disappoint myself and my dad, right? At least it is not hurting. I know that I do have the potential. So that is when dealing with disappointment, is, it's not say that you'll be happy with this one, no. But dealing and facing disappointment is a lot of easier to come to face with the person mm -hmm. that disappointed at you. And also look at the mirror that you look kinder when you are disappointed at yourself. Mm, isn't it right. right so then then it will give us the the courage to try again because mm. i do believe that maybe something is not right sure sure you see? so explain your expectation mm -hmm. you know make sure you are honest and you are wise yeah okay. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. and tell your child to you know that you know if I say that you know a lot of parents they come to me no no we're not expectation I say stop your parents. right right yes stop yeah so true realistic you know? like they come to you say oh, Renee we send her to to your school we just want her to enjoy we have no expectation I say, tell me your expectation then I tell you how to make that work right. and then we sit down with the child because when you want an expectation on me I think be fair that I need to know. Sure, sure, absolutely. Right. right, this is why expectation uh, is so scary to children because no one tell them, like they wasn't informed, right? Mm-hmm. And this is where, when it comes to disappointment, it's just like, like you, you don't know what will happen. Yes, absolutely. You, you see? Yeah, yes. and it's involved me, you know? It's just mm-hmm. like, you just tell me that I'm hungry, cook me something. But you didn't tell me your diet, uh, happy or whatever. I, I had to go to the kitchen and it, it's a, what, what if you don't like it? Sure. So if it involves a child, no matter how young, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. if you are having expectation on your two years old, maybe you should sit on the thinking chair with your wife. Right. For, for a few years. Right. <laughs> okay. yeah. So if anything that you you have in your head has to do with another person, let's be fair. Mm-hmm. Let's be fair. You know, and it's always a good thing that when you explain, express, and you share, this is called connection. Yes, right? absolutely. So every time when a child being involved, involved in your thinking, in your planning, I feel important. Mm-hmm. Yes. I feel respect. Right. I feel love. I feel worthy. Mm-hmm. I feel safe. So I don't see there is any bad thing about sharing expectation. I see so many good things when you involve your kids. But first thing you have to deal with your own honesty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such such an important point. Absolutely. And that leads, as you were talking about expectations and making them achievable and realistic and all of the valuable points that you just shared. That leads into our next question, which is there are a large number of issues now with the younger generation, depression, self-mutilation, suicidal thoughts are on the rise, as you've shared in a previous um, statement that you mentioned. So what advice would you give to parents who see signs of this, whether it be self-mutilation, whether it be suicidal thoughts, what advice would you give to parents in this situation? Right. First of all, you will see the sign. The clear sign is your child is getting angry easily. Mm. Right? So it's always a behavior change. Mm-hmm. You know, I never seen an angry toddler, angry all the time, you know. Right. That down baby, they don't cry. No, right? right? So there's always a change of behavior. So change of behavior means they're acting out. Mm-hmm. Right? So acting out is it's a very loud shout or scream saying, look at me. Yeah. But many times parents say that, look at him, acting out again, and they walk away. Or laugh. Yeah. Or they yeah. gossip about it, and then they tell the grandparent, they tell the auntie, they tell the friends, you know. So, no, when your child is acting out, some parents, the they best line is like, oh, seeking attention. I was like, of course, it's seeking attention. Then why don't you just give it? Yes, there's a need for that. Absolutely. <sighs> it's like, why are you so stingy on your attention with your own children? So if he's not seeking attention from you, should he go to next door neighbor, the mother? Mm. Right? right? So so where the child is acting out, that is where we sit down, we say what we see. And we want to know, is there anything I can do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see? Because when it comes to cell mutation, depressions, and suicidal uh, uh, behavior, all these are the final phase. Because, again, all these fighters already try to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, to be careful, to feel important, to feel that am I really worth to be in your life? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not not overnight my son just, you know, cut himself. No, mm. there. If the parents are honest, you will hear story like you know. So I when I see all these teenager, like teenager as young as like thirteen to nineteen, right? Right. So usually the parents found out, we all school found out, right? So they cut themselves. I say how 
how long has it been? No one, no one, even adult, no one actually come to me, sit right in front of me, tell me that I feel depressed last week. No, they already for years, right? So if you are 16, I say since, when is the first time you start to hurt yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 12, four years. Without anyone knowing. Yeah. What your parents doing? So does your parent know? No, the worst part is my parents know. Oh dear. My parents are, and they say yes, they, they you know, they shrug. They say, I say, so they do nothing. I say, mm, no, you see. So when children acting out in the first place, they want to, they want assurance. Right. So most of these kids, when they're acting out, right, you know that they are not having the safety net that they actually deserve. Mm -hmm. So they try to find the net mm -hmm. and parents not giving them. So when when they actually give up, is the point that when they give up, hopelessness, knock on their door, is the day that my parents know about us and do nothing. What does it say? You don't love me. I'm not worth it. I don't deserve this. You know, I'm not important to you at all. Oh. So that, mm. that is where they gave up. So you see, the moment they gave up, parents actually say that he is so disrespectful and uh, he is so angry and he is so rude. You see all this thing they put on these kids. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And then they say that uh, even though when we say, when after some, this one mother, which yesterday she said, I, I, I do try to, you know, tell him I love him. And then he angry because why? He, I'm sure he called it hypocrite. She said, oh yeah, how do you know? I said, yeah, <laughs> because I am proven right. that you don't love me. Then now you tell me you love me. Do you like it? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like you're, you're, you, you find out your husband having an affair, sleeping with many women and come back and say that I, I love you, you know. Do you get like, hey, thank you? No, you oh, get us yeah. you sleep in pain, right? So when children make believe, then I always have that is the hardest thing to do. I mean, even for professionals to have to, we have to actually convert the religion. We right. convert religion because it becomes their religion. I am not worthy. Right. I'm not important. Uh -huh. So when you are not important, when you're not worthy, when you are small, when you are a loser, right? What makes you think this person will be motivated, want to have a bright future? You know, yeah. seriously, no, because today is like nothing to lose. I already down with nothing. Right. Yeah, they're just trying to survive. Yeah, they just trying to survive until they can't. Yeah. You know, so you tell them that don't be so stupid, you know, to do this kind of thing to hurt yourself. To them, it's like you don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't even have a self to hurt. I'm only hurting them. Wow. Yeah. So powerful. Thank you for Very sharing. Heavy. It's, heavy. It's, it's so heavy, <laughs> but I think your advice, because we see, we hear so many things and we read it in the newspaper about things that are happening and the pressures that are put on children and just how they're struggling to cope with it. And I think you just made such a great point that when parents find out, it's not the time it started happening it's obviously been happening quite a long time before yeah, yeah. and there's just... no new there's no new wounds yeah and they're just crying out for that love correct yeah and then we just blame that this generation we blame the social media we blame their friends you know mm -hmm. but no no matter how the world changed <clears throat> we still the same we want love yeah. We want connections. Mm -hmm. We want to feel secure. We want to know that we are we matter. We want to know that we are important. At least, <clears throat> at least one or two person on earth. Yeah, absolutely. you know. So all these kids, all the people that you see, right? They actually have the belief that no one, no one care. Oh, you see. Yeah, and it's heartbreaking. So then you go back to your connection. Mm. So it's very important. Absolutely. So there is a lot more awareness now about the importance of mental health. So what is the earliest age that you would recommend parents to seek professional help and support if they do see that their children need support in these areas? Okay, I do encourage uh, children uh, being sent to therapy. Sure. Because it's, it's, it's unnecessary trauma that I, I have to 
you know, experience, right? Unless it is really bad, right? Otherwise, if you spot that behavior change, you find it challenging to uh, communicate or, you know, you, you have some concern, usually parents come and do the work and you bring the work home, you know, right. unless, unless there is a, a, a tendency of harming self and others, then yeah. I will see the child no matter at what age. Otherwise, if you are sensitive enough, close enough to watch your child, if you sense anything, you come and do the work. Mm. It's not your child problem. There's no problem child. It's always problem parent. Right. You know, so when your attitude change, your thinking change, your mindset change, your child will be curious at what's wrong with you. Right. 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 Otherwise, they will say that I knew it. I knew he would say that. I know she will do this. You see, they knew it. So when I knew it, right, usually you say, I knew he's going to cheat on me. I knew he's going to like, this is sound from where? Hopelessness. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right, and some kids say, I don't care, I don't care. I said, It's so painful, mm-hmm. so painful to not care when you know that you actually care. Yeah, yeah, you every day have to fight with yourself. Say, I hate my parents. I say, That is so so painful. I feel painful. I always tell all these kids, I say, You know, I feel painful for you. You see, mm. but parents need to know that children come to our world. We only one mission to love the parents. Only one mission. You know, even until no matter how old we are right now, I still want to love my parents. Absolutely. Isn't it? There's no kids come and say, this, I haven't met one. Okay, if you have one fish, TV, no, I've, I've you never met them. one. I have never <laughs> met one say that I plan to shame my mother tomorrow. Right. You know, I, I plan to fail my. My uh, uh, disappoint my father next week. No, none, none, none. But I don't know why parents have this distorted the 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 the, the vision that the children like you can hear something. Like, you purposely do this to make me angry. I say, wow, this is genius. <laughs> you purposely do this to me. Yeah. It must be a lifelong plan in the womb. Huh? She's got to plan to make you upset. <laughs> you know, I was like, so I say, always remember, our children come to our life with one mission, just to love us. Until we start to judge. Right. Then you can see they go away. Mm, yeah. You know? So mm. it's about us, right? Whatever they are doing, actually, it's all about us. Even though, even though now I am 50, I still don't want to make my, I still want to make my father proud. Of you know? Course. Yeah. yeah. No one, no one. So if you believe that your child delivery made you, uh, you know, make you lose face, make you, uh, you know, make you upset. Think again, think again. You know, what you think that the child is so dumb that he didn't know the consequences of making the father got upset. <laughs> he mm. planned for that. No, no, no such thing, right? Mm. And, and with this, even though they might make wrong decisions, right. but this is the best, maybe this is the best thing they can do. Yes, at that time. Yes, right. yes, absolutely. Right. It's the same thing a parent complain about. What about when children lie? I say then problem is you. Right? When I lie to you because I don't trust you. Mm. Right? So this is where I, in order to protect this relationship, I lie. Right? So it's about am I able to actually tell you the truth mm. because mm. if i i know or i believe or i learn that you can't handle the truth your children have to lie so when your children start lying then look at the mirror what have i done to break the trust mm-hmm. right if you ask a little one right very young two three years old then you say why why she cried i push her right they won't lie because exactly. so honest i push her because because she don't let me play her toy, so I push her or I slap her, I hit her head. You know, they do it, they do it until they learn about, oh no, this, this mad woman cannot handle the truth. <laughs> I better lie about it. So Hi. if you ask that when your child lying, it's a self-reflection, self-reflection. Ask yourself what I've done to break mm, the trust. Yeah. Trust and love. Oh, Dr. Jasmine, it has been an absolute pleasure having the time with you today. Thank you so much for 
taking the time out of your hectic schedule to give us so many, so many pearls of wisdom. I know that I've learned a lot from you and I'm sure our listeners will too. So thank you so much for your time. Welcome. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you've learned new strategies to support you and your children to cope with life. Do send us any questions that you might have or share with us an encouraging story about how the strategies that Dr. Jasmine has shared have supported you to cope. Thank you. Thank you.